Welcome again to our channel. In this tutorial we will create this flyer in Photoshop. Let's get started. Step 1. Create the background. Let's start by creating a new document. Make sure that, both width and height, are 4 by 6 inches. Also, resolution is 300 pixel per inch, with a CMYK color mode. Press Ctrl plus R, to show rulers. Grab four guides to the four edges. Then, go to, Image, Canvas Size. Now, increase canvas size by 0.25 inch, in both width and height. Now, the area outside the rulers, is the bleed area. The bleed area, is the area that will be trimmed, during the flyer printing process. Go to File, then, Place Embedded, and double-click this image to import it. Right-click the image and choose, Flip Horizontal. Hold Alt plus Shift, to resize the image around its center. Now, pick up the Quick Selection tool, and start selecting the mountains as seen. Make a layer mask with your selection, to isolate what you have selected. Let's import the sky image. Go to File, Place Embedded. Double click to import it. Reposition at the top. Hold Alt plus Shift, to resize the image proportionally around its center. Drag the sky layer below the mountains layer. Select the Move tool. Then, adjust both mountains and sky layers positions. Select the sky image. Then, press Ctrl plus T to free transform it. Make sure to hold Alt plus Shift, while resizing. Select the sky image again, and add a photo filter layer. Select the warming filter 85. Now, change the blending mode to overlay, and decrease opacity a little bit. As you can see, this will enrich the sky colors. Select the first layer, hold Shift, then select the last layer. Drag and drop to group them. Give a name to the group, then, press Enter. Delete the background layer. Now, select the mountains layer. Grab your brush tool, and change your foreground color to white. Create a new layer. Go to the brush control panel, and decrease both brush opacity and flow. Start painting as seen. This will add some fog to the top of the mountain, and make it looks like more realistic. Step 2. Create the table. Go to File, Place Embedded, and import the table image. Adjust the image size as seen. Select the rectangular marquee tool. Then, start selecting the wood table as seen. Make sure that it is correctly selected from the top. After you feel comfortable with your selection, click on the mask icon, to mask what you have selected. Press Ctrl plus T, to resize the wood table a little bit. Now, let's import the second wood image. I always use Place Embedded, because it imports images as a smart object. Drag it to the bottom, and start repositioning and resizing. From Layers panel, drag it below the table layer. As you can see, we need to match both wood colors, since they are a little bit different. I will change the second layer's tone, with a Levels Adjustment layer. Make sure to clip mask it. Increase Shadow Input and decrease highlights input. As you can see, this will increase the total contrast, and enrich the wood color. Let's add shadow to the table. Create a new layer between the two layers. Grab the brush tool with a black color. 
decrease both opacity and flow. Start painting over the new layer, to add a general shadow. Then, with the brush edge, start painting over the table corner multiple times, to add a heavier shadow. This will give us a more realistic table. Now, select all layers and group them. Rename it whatever you want. In my case, I named it table. Now, let's import the fence image. From place embedded, double click the file to import it. Adjust position and size. Drag the fence layer below the table group. Now, let's match colors. Select the fence layer, then create a photo filter layer above it. Choose a warm filter 85, and increase density as seen. Then, clip mask it, to restrict the filter layer only to the fence. After that, change blend mode to linear burn. I think it needs some more saturation. So, I will add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And start playing with hue and saturation sliders. Let's check our final result. That's great. Select the shown layers, and group them as seen. Step 3. Add the coffee cup. This is the coffee image that I'm going to use. I downloaded it from Shutterstock. And isolated it with the pen tool. Let's drag it to our main document. Select it, and press Ctrl plus T, to free transform. Adjust rotation and size to place the coffee on the table. Ctrl plus T again, and make it more wider. Press Enter. Now, grab the polygonal lasso tool. Start selecting this coffee splash. Select the coffee layer, then, Press Ctrl plus J, to take what you have selected to a new layer. Now, I need to bend this splash a little bit. Select the coffee layer, then, go to Edit, and choose, Puppet Warp. Make sure that, both mode and density are normal. Add a 3 pins to fix the splash base as seen. Add a pin to the splash middle, and another to the end. Move both pins, until you bend the splash like this. Press Enter. Select the splash layer, and start positioning it. Press Ctrl plus T, then, right click and choose, Flip Horizontal. Adjust the splash position and size. We are trying now, to make the coffee splash come smoothly from the right side. After you position it, decrease the layer opacity. Pick a brush tool with a black foreground color. Create a new mask. Increase the brush hardness. Start painting over the mask with the black brush, to remove the unneeded parts. To undo a step, press Alt plus Ctrl plus Z. Increase the opacity again. Decrease the brush opacity, and start painting over the mask, to smooth the splash end. Great! That looks good! Select both layers, and group them. Step 4. Add cookies and shadow. 
Go to File, then Open. And choose the Cookies image. Pick your Quick Selection tool, and start selecting the cookies. The plus selection tool adds to selection and the minus selection tool removes from the selection. Improve your selection as seen. You can switch between the plus and minus selection tools by holding the alt key. Now Click on the mask icon, to mask what you have selected. Right click the layer, and convert to a smart object. Drag and drop the layer inside the main document. Drag the cookies layer, below the coffee group. Resize the cookies, and position them behind the coffee. Right click, and choose flip horizontal. Adjust size and position again. Now, it's time to add the shadow. Pick your brush tool, and change the foreground color to black. Decrease both brush opacity and flow. Add a new layer, and drag it below the cookies layer. To create a perfect shadow, start making the general shadow, by painting with a very low opacity and flow brush, over a large area. Assume that the light source is from that direction. As a result, the shadow also should be in the same direction. Let's continue. As you can see, this is the general shadow. Let's increase opacity and flow, to make the contact shadow. You can create the contact shadow, with your brush edge, as seen. Contact shadow, is the direct shadow between the surface and the object. I think we're fine here. Now, group both layers. Let's add a shadow to the coffee. Create a new layer below the coffee cup. Decrease opacity and flow, and start painting. Start creating the general shadow first. Make sure that, you are painting in the right direction. Now, increase both opacity and flow, and paint again. Remember, to undo a step, press Ctrl plus C. Increase again, and create the contact shadow. That's great. Step 5. Add the header. Let's import the wood sign. Hold Alt plus Shift, to resize the image proportionally around the center. Position it, at the top. Grab the type tool and start typing. In my case, I use code bold font, with white color. Press Ctrl plus T to free transform. Double click the text layer, to open the layer style window. From blending options, go to, blend if. By dragging the bottom two sliders, you can see that this blends the text with the wood. Hold Alt and click and drag to split the shadow slider. Again, hold Alt and click and drag to split the highlight slider. Splitting the slider means smoother blending. Decrease opacity a little bit.
Group them header. Step 6. Add footer and price label. I have made a 2 PSD files, for both footer and price label. Go to file, open, to open the price label PSD file. Just drag and drop the group to your main document. Make sure that auto select is unchecked, then, select the price label group, and reposition it. Now, let's import the footer text. The same way, just drag and drop to your document. Grab a ruler guide to the center. Make sure that all your elements are perfectly aligned. Step 7. Adjustments. Let's add some adjustment layers. Let's start by selective color. Target the neutral colors first. Then, play with sliders until you feel comfortable with the result. Target whites too. Add color balance layer. Choose shadows, and adjust the CMY sliders. Repeat with mid-tones. Also with highlights. Let's add levels layer, to increase contrast a little bit. That's cool. Add hue and saturation layer, just to increase saturation a little bit. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe.